Um, this is the 22nd Roxbury International Film Festival. Um, we are up and running <laughs> despite COVID. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank Lisa Simmons and the whole Simmons family. You know, we really appreciate everything they do for this festival. And we're really excited to have all our filmmakers here live and direct. Um, so if you could take a moment just to introduce yourselves and kind of tell us which film you worked on and, you know, something a little bit about yourselves. Sure, yeah, I can, I can go first. Well, hi, my name is Patrice Bowman. I was the director of the short film, the play beforehand, Saturday Grace, the, the dancing and faith one and with the friendship. And a little bit about me, I'm an award-winning filmmaker, editor and colorist located in New York City. I have a small production, post-production company, Bowman Pictures. I'm always looking to <laughs> collaborate and support other filmmakers who care about meaningful uh, visual storytelling. Cool. Um, hi, my name is Jacob Melton. Um, I played Scott in Puzzled. I'm an actor. I've been in the entertainment industry for about 10 years now, and uh, I've known Cornetta for a long time. Uh, we created this film, I believe it was like 2010, so... It's been a minute, but I'm really happy with the final product, and uh, I'm so great it was in another festival. Carnetta's not here. She'll be back. Okay. All right. Um, so I do have a few questions for you guys. Um, what inspired you to... Oh, Carnetta, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, hi. I, I there can you hear you. are. We were looking for you. Great. <laughs> Hello, people. Hi. Hey. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your film? Yeah, I can. Um, my film is called Puzzled, and I'm the director of it, and I also uh, was the, one of the executive producer producers on it. It's a passion project of mine, as well as the, uh, the writer and the executive producer. She was very close to this issue and she wanted to just get it out of her system and put it down and write about these kids, our children who are in the foster care and what it looks like internally. And um, so I took on this project. It was actually, uh, it took seven years because we, it post-production, we finished December uh, 31st, 2019. And so seven years from that is what, 26, uh, 2016? And so, um, or something I know, I'm sorry. Anyways, I'm not very good at math, but um, so we, we, we put a lot of just love and, and time and energy into this. And um, it was in my home. And we just uh, did all like, you know, the gorilla type uh, uh, filmmaking just so that we can get it done. So it definitely is a passion project. So thank you for asking. All right. Well, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, you guys had the opportunities to complete your projects. Speaking of locations, can you tell us what inspired, um, and this is an open-ended question, open to anyone. Can you tell us, you know, where you filmed, what city you filmed in, and also what may have led up to that location decision? Yeah, sure. So for Saturday Grace, in terms of locations, I shot primarily in the neighborhood of Bushwick in Brooklyn when I was living there for a little bit. So you see the Maria Hernandez Park. I happened to use the apartment of one of my co-producers, uh, Jessica, for the room where the, the main character, um, Iana is, and like in the opening, that's the apartment. And I also used, um, a church in Bushwick um, for the the final dance scene, the yeah South Bushwick uh, church, and in terms of the locations for that, it was just mainly it was just locations where I could get it like it was accessible to myself and the crew, uh, and the with the producer, she, you know, she helped me out with her room. So that was great. And like with the church, it took a lot of scouting around to find a place that 
was visually appealing and also they were willing to let us film there because it's definitely a lot of work to find a, a location where both of those meet. So that's the, the backstory behind those things. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much my uh, situation is very similar to yours, uh, Patrice. I, I used my home mainly, that was the main location, the, uh, the, the um, group home. And then I used another friend's home. It, it was uh, the backyard, the swimming pool area. Then I used the opening uh, home was another friend's home when he was like kind of the, the lead uh, actor was running away from his like sixth uh, foster care home. So it was that and it was shot in the nighttime. And then we used a church as well. It was uh, one of my pastor's friends. Okay. Uh, he did it and then Another location was actually the alleyway of a studio that my friend was running. And so we used that. And yeah, it was, and a lot of times it was just opened up because it was the sidewalk in some instances where one of the scenes where the kids are like just walking from the church. And that was basically whatever that background was, they were, you know, walking on. And we just took the liberty to use it, even though we didn't have any permits. We didn't have any permits for anything. Oh, wow. We did it all gorilla style. <laughs> um, so that was pretty much it. And I think that just because the uh, authenticity of the homes and it was just every space was just so dear to me and I knew the people, it had its own vibe and it had its own truth and essence to it. So I also felt that, that it gave a lot to the film, to the just the, the authenticity of the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you want to say, Scott? I mean, <laughs> Jacob. Um, yeah, I just, I just remember um, I was really young, but I remember <laughs> being in Carnetta's house, uh, kind of just moving around the rooms everywhere we filmed and uh, had a fun, you know, fun time just there from, I remember early in the morning to late at night and yeah. long hours. I remember filming in, I believe it was in Burbank in a house outside and there was a big pool. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay. we just, I know me, I was young. I was eating fruit snacks and just hanging out all day. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, and that, that's really all I remember. But um, as far as the set goes. Yeah, it, we, we actually shot only on weekends because we, you know, our cast was mainly kids in school. And when Jacob started, Jacob, you were like 11 when you did it? Yeah, yeah I was like 11. <laughs> and how old are you now? I am 19. I'll be 20 oh in a few months. Dude. What? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, we finished in December, you know, of 2019. So it was... It was like a hallelujah moment. Thank you, Jesus. I fell on the ground. I was like, oh my God, I'm so thankful because it was just so, so long. And, and I felt I wanted to get it done and it was just collecting money. It was my first feature film. And I had no idea that you have to count the costs. Like I had the money to produce it to, for the principal shooting, but then I totally didn't consider it post-production. And that's what yeah. took so long, that's the most important. So it was it definitely did. a learning experience, you know, like it is trial and error. Yeah, that sounds pretty yeah. spectacular. Um, I know for me, when I look at a bunch of films in a festival, one of the things that really stands out is the title of the film. Both of you have some very interesting titles. Can you dig into what it might in, might have inspired you in regards to the title of your film? Yeah, so with mine, Saturday Grace, it's supposed to be a combination of you know, grace, the, the religious concept of, you know, just being, having grace over your life, something that, you know, isn't earned, but it just happens and it blesses you. And with Saturday, you know, it's just, usually it's a day where you think of, oh, it's just a lot of partying and it sort of has like a secular connotation. I was originally going to call it Sunday Grace because that seemed to be the most obvious pairing, but because as you see in the short film, you have the two really different characters, one that's religious, one isn't, but they both form a friendship and a meaningful connection through dance. I wanted to combine the two words that mean totally different things, but they, they come together. Thank you, Patricia. Patrice. Um, 
I definitely can resonate with that. <laughs> um, yeah. What about you, Carnetta? Um, yeah, puzzled um, the writer, Lisa um, Anderson. She, um, it had it like, it's like this dual meaning puzzle because in the film there's a puzzle that there, this kid is putting together to figure out his um, origin, like who his family members are because he had had a car accident, he didn't remember. And he re the uh, social worker, Miss Jones, finds the puzzle and she begins to put the puzzle together. But also puzzle means like these children are put together as pieces into this home and they have to find ways to put themselves together in this family. And this, that's the dynamics of being in a blended family or being in a foster care when you're kind of just tossed into this environment, this artificial family environment and say, this is your new sister, this is your brother. And then you have to figure out which is another meaning of puzzled, because you're puzzled, you know, emotionally puzzled as well. So it's pretty cool, I think. Wow. Um, yeah, that definitely stood out. Um, one of the things I loved about Saturday Grace was, you know, you have these two women working together. And then in, as, as well as in Puzzled, like they learn how to work together, which is, is really great. And thank you for mentioning that part, because I thought that was a really unique part of the movie when she was putting the puzzle pieces together and, you know, figured out what she figured out. I'm not giving anything away for those who <laughs> haven't watched it yet. Yeah, um, thank you. But yeah, that yeah. was great. Where do you see yourselves in the next three to five years? Like what projects are you working on? Which, you know, which directions are you going into? Open-ended. Open-ended. Patrice, you want to start that or I can start that if you want. Oh, sure, yeah. So for the next, you said three to five years? Yes. Uh, well, one of the things that I'm really working on is just continuing to develop more stories that are sort of in this realm of stories that deal with people's faith in nuanced ways, as you could see in Saturday Grace, where there was a combination of art, artistic dance, uh, a religious woman having a common ground with a non-religious woman, and things like that. I, as I move forward, I want to continue to develop more and more stories like that that can tell like nuanced, complicated, artistic, religious stories for a wide audience. And of course, continuing to do that alongside of post-production, editing and color grading, which I also did for Saturday Grace. So mm -hmm. that's the, the main push. So I, I definitely have some more scripts that I'm developing right now. Nice. Um, for me, I have, um, this was actually my first feature film directing. And so I, I am like an acting coach and an actress. And so I'm always coaching and directing others for preparation for um, you know, auditions and films. And so I've had that privilege and I love directing. And I've, I've had um, a, someone who's amazing, this gentleman who has this great script, it's called Grandma's Bible. And it's kind of like a mixture of uh, the traveling pants because this Bible has life. And anyone who takes, uh, just comes in relationship to it, something happens. It's, it's like a religious experience. Um, they get saved, they, 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 seeds get watered and something is a transformation that happens. And so this Bible travels from uh, the inner city to across this country road and to this like island in because this guy is in pursuit of finding grandma's bible because grandma's bible has the title d grandma was wealthy a real estate woman and she left her son her her grandson some money and uh in order for him to inherit the money but also come in contact with god and the word of god and the holy spirit he has to find this bible so it's a journey for him as well as the bible it's wonderful and so i i haven't started that we were going to go into production um in uh, spring of this year and we weren't able to because of covid so in the meantime i've optioned like four people's lives and i'm super excited about it and right now i'm in the middle of pitching them um I have 
Ida Killing's um, option to do her story. Ida Killing, she's like the African American woman who started running, like long distance running, uh, international running, winning awards. She's 103 right now. And so I got her life because she started running when she was 67 um, and it was because of depression. And so it, 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 she's around. If you want to like look her up on um, YouTube, she's amazing. And I also got uh, Sherry Johnson, the uh, African-American woman she's, who was also a Christian. She, her life, she had to get married at 10 because she was raped by a family member. And she comes from a religious home. And so her mother says, you know, well, you're pregnant now. So you got to marry this 20 something old man. And she's like 10. So her whole life is like this is about child marriage and how she go, gets through that and how she finds peace and solace in the word of God. But it, it's a long journey for her. And then the other person that we have is um, uh, Duranes, um, Duranis, Duranis Pace of the Pace Sisters. I have her story. Her story is incredible. She's still singing, but uh, there's an article um, no, it's not an article, but uh, Steve Harvey, she was on Steve Harvey show. And she was saying that when she was ministering all around, you know, she went to this particular church and somebody in the, somewhere in the community, she was always going to the specific restaurant, gave her rat poisoning. So she ended up being in the hospital, right? Losing her esophagus and pretty much everything that causes, helps her to sing. Miraculously, she's singing without it. So her life is just amazing. So I have option her story and we're looking for places for her and my last one i have the uh the actual official story of the emmett till um it's called the blood of emmett till by um what's his name david tyson and it's the uh, new york bestseller he it's a full account because he's the only guy he's a historian as well who has the confession of carolyn who said that she lied about him wow um, that yeah. sounds really interesting. All of them. I know. Thank um, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm I, I'm, I'm zoomed in. I have to ask you though. We're speaking of um, inspiring stories. So, what originally inspired you to write the or or be a part of the projects that you were a part of? And I'm gonna flip this one over to Jacob because Jacob, you've been quiet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I was just going to add, um, I just did a movie with uh, Pure Flix uh, called Beckman that just came out and uh, my, my career has been blowing up and I can't wait for it to, you know, <laughs> increase and uh, do get back to work officially. But uh, I, yeah, I did a movie with Pure Flix and uh, David A.R. White from God's Not Dead and uh, Billy Baldwin and some people from uh, The Walking Dead, like, um, uh, what's her name? Brighton. I don't know how you say her last name, like Soprano or something, but uh, yeah, big cast, and uh, the movie just came out uh, officially this last week. So, um, yeah, I'm just happy to share that. But uh, just, it's been amazing how God's worked in my life, and uh, yeah, we'll just see where it goes. But uh, yeah, for the inspiration of this film, um, I guess the reason why I tagged along is, well, I've known Carnetta. She helped me. She's been such a blessing in my life since the beginning of my acting career. Uh, started doing some classes with her, and uh, she's been a blessing. Uh, but then also just this, this, um, this project really hits home because my mother, she actually works in group homes. And so a lot of the stories are actually exact parallel to some of the stories that actually go on in the uh, real group homes. And uh, it's so amazing to see that. Like I, I, I got to hang out with a lot of these people on a, on a weekend to weekend basis because we had a horse. And so they would come you know, just ride on the horses and, and see the animals on our, on our small little ranch. And, uh, you know, you talk to some of these people and, you know, some of them come across very edgy, some of them very timid or edgy at sometimes and then timid at others. And uh, just some really deep, deep stories. I mean, they got some rough lives ahead of them, you know, because they just, they're not, they're not loved by, by their own family or they were just, you know, whatever the particulars came up and, you know, it's very hard. So, um, you know, it's very touching just to be a part of a project like this and sort of just be a part of like a message about, uh, you know, bringing together like a family, especially in these group homes, because it's very difficult being in these group homes. And I would share a lot of these deep stories I know, but I don't know if I can make that public mm -hmm. or not, but, right. no, but that's, that's why I love this story. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's completely understandable. And we respect your privacy. But, you know, mm -hmm. thank you. And thank you for taking it one step farther. You know, the horseback riding is pr probably very therapeutic. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, ladies, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, in terms of Saturday Grace, how I developed the story, I well, thinking back, when I originally started plotting out the characters and the storyline and all that, I was in a place where I had worked on a lot of like short films and like a documentary series where a lot of the subject matter was really depressing. And, you know, obviously not the most uplifting material in terms of like, like conflicts and things like that. So I wanted to contribute something a little bit more positive in, in my life and obviously share it with others with a film about two very different people making a human connection in New York City where it can be very difficult to do that sometimes. Uh, so I wanted that the short film as I was planning it out to be you know a mixture of like music and wonderful dancing and you know two characters showing everyone hey in New York maybe slow down a little bit and connect with someone that you may not think you can make a connection with. So that was that was kind of my approach with developing the story of Saturday Grace and directing it and, you know, presenting it to everyone here. Nice. Definitely agree with that. <laughs> um, Carnetta? I was just going to say, I had done the um, Oakland International Film Festival and they had a, a brief Q&A, question and answer session. And I remember it was a perspective that I really hadn't considered, and it was a, a, a father. And he said that this is a conversation that parents need to really talk about, how they're uh, leaving their kids in the, sometimes this kind of environment, and they're not aware what these uh, obstacles these kids are facing and what type of trauma they're facing. Like, surely the people in our group home they did have some deep, you know, things happening, but I've heard a lot worse situations go on in group, group homes and how our kids are being um, saddled with uh, grown folks stuff and they shouldn't and they, they should be protected and they're not. So this gentleman, he said, you know, it is a, a confrontation that he feels a challenge towards the parents and look what's going on and you need to really look and see because it is a, a a story about kids living in this group home and you think it's just about the kids but you have to ask yourself why are they there and who put them there mm -hmm. definitely um angelique has joined us angelique will you unmute your mic and introduce yourself to everyone hi my name is angelique bates uh, sorry <laughs> Um, I played and puzzled, and I just I got the invite, and I'm here. Sorry I'm late. That's all right. It's wonderful to have you. Um, would you like to share with us anything that stood out to you about the film or anything that you'd like to speak in regards to? As far as puzzled, um, I believe it's a great movie uh, with what's going on in society right now. I think um, more of what's going on inside of the group homes and um, what the children are going through uh, and even the adults, even the social workers, even people that are trying to operate the group homes. Um, a lot of people just have a misconception that these are just bad kids that are in there and either that they, they did something or it was their fault. And a lot of times it's not their fault. You know, it's, it's just different situations and the kids are trying to make the best of the cars that they were dealt and sometimes those aren't good cars and you know when they're sitting there trying to look for love or a parent figure in the wrong place you know you get certain reactions and you know you get certain behaviors but if no one understands them then you know it's deciphered as they're just rebellious and they just keep on fighting trying to get attention because sometimes any attention is good attention right <clears throat> Wonderful. So we have about two minutes left. I'd love to give you this time to kind of speak about anyone, you know, you want to, you know, basically open it up to you guys and you can talk about, you know, your next projects or whatever it is you want to talk about. 
Yeah, I, for my next projects, I currently have two short scripts that I'm developing right now. So one, I am, as much as Saturday Grace was a pretty like uplifting, happy movie, my next one is going to be tackling like a, the idea of a person being isolated, obviously during COVID-19 and dealing with all the different news and chaos that's surrounding them while also trying to realize that even with all this chaos, it can contribute something positive, positive to the world through activism. It's going to be loosely uh, tackling the, the book of Ecclesiastes as well, if anyone's familiar with that. It's a famous <laughs> book in the Bible about <laughs> things being meaningless, but also you have to be you have to be virtuous, things like that. So that's one of the scripts I'm working on. And then another one, it's about a, a young girl who recently lost her father. And one night she sees what she thinks is the ghost of her father and she's dealing with the uh, the eeriness of that. So those are the two projects that I have currently going on right now. Hopefully one I can do this year and the other one I can do in 2021. All right, I gotta keep you guys on time. Um, Patrice, that's wonderful. I definitely believe in the positivity, um, especially during COVID. Any last words? I just wanna say thank you so much to Rox very film festival for inviting and selecting puzzle because I just love Lisa and I love um, everything that she does. It's uh, you know the highest caliber, so much love, so much to professionalism and to be able to do it right virtually because I've been on some virtual calls and it's been a task for a lot of people and everybody can't really tackle it in the way where it's comfortable. It's, it's you know, you can hear each other except me. I couldn't get the backdrop right. But other than that, um, it's been a great experience and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a chance to do one of the hangouts. Do you have one more hangout left so I can? There's a hang hangout tonight, right okay. after this. So I hope okay. to see you guys there. I'll be there. <laughs> okay, maybe you can send me the link again. That would be great. Oh yeah, same here. I'm in Georgia, <laughs> so I send my love. You're in Hi. Georgia? Yes, so we have a time difference, that's, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing there? Are you working? I've been here since March. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I guess any um if you guys are cool, we're cool and I'll check you out at the hangout. All right. Thank you so Bye. much. God bless everyone. God Thank bless you. you guys. Nice <laughs> meeting you. Nice meeting you. Bye. 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 Bye.